Um, so let's look at some movement of the knee. Here's the medial collateral ligament. Watch the movement and flexion extension of the medial collateral ligament. Okay. Here's the lateral collateral ligament. And you can see that the movement of the, of the uh, femur on the tibia and also look at the ligament being moving forward and back and look at the whole movement of the whole joint here. You can also watch the patella and the patellar tendon. We'll just do that one again. Maybe watching the patella and the patellar tendon sliding in that fashion. See how the patella slides in the groove there, intercondylar space, intercondylar groove. Here we have the patellar motion from above, during flexion and extension. And you can see it slides in and out of that groove. Normally it should stay right in its intercondylar space. Um, these are the primal pictures um, slides. Here we have what's called patellofemoral tracking. This is the tracking that should take place where that patella stays right in that groove in the intercondylar space. Here we see again patellar ligament and we see the, the course of it tracking. Let's do it again. And it should slide evenly and, and uh, smoothly through that groove. And when sometimes there's an imbalance in the muscles, particularly the quadriceps vastus muscles, for the most part it could be other muscles, but the vastus muscles, it will not slide in that groove and it'll create a lot of pain as the patient flexes and extends their knee. Here's more tibial femoral motion. And you see the posterior collateral ligament and the anterior collateral ligament, posterior collateral ligament, anterior collateral ligament. I'm sorry, posterior, anterior collateral ligaments. And here we see another one. These are so cool, I just thought I'd put them all in. You can see the collateral ligaments. And here's the lateral collateral ligament and the, the uh, cruciate ligaments. I mean, I said collateral, I meant cruciate ligaments. Right, let me look at this one again. So the cruciate ligaments, anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. The medial collateral ligament, the lateral collateral ligament, the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments firing. Okay. So with those in mind, then the patellofemoral stress syndrome has to do with something called the Q angle. And the Q angle is increased in patellofemoral stress syndrome. We'll show what the Q angle is in a minute, but um, it's usually due to a decreased function of the vastus medialis.